Hello, and welcome to Esther's Gardening Adventures. I'm Esther, and in my backyard, I have a mulberry tree that is right now brimming with black, ripe, delicious mulberries. And I thought I would show you the process that I use for harvesting and storing them, and you know, later for later using them. As a small gardener, it's virtually impossible to ha have enough space to produce enough produce to harvest a huge amount at one time, with exception to maybe things that grow real fast and take up a small space like radishes, for example. And so you have to do additional tricks that someone with much more acreage might not have to do as much in order to get enough of the materials you want to use to produce the products you want. In the case of mulberries, which are some beautiful black, uh, dark purple black fruits that um, taste a lot like a blackberry slash blueberry combined. Uh, quite sweet, but not overly sweet. And in the case of these mulberries, the tree is, is laden with fruit, but the individual berries don't all ripen on the same day. They ripen over a period of time. Now this is my first year really tracking it, but I've noticed that I can probably get like two to three cups worth of mulberries, maybe two cups worth of mulberries at a time if I'm really aggressive. Now I haven't gotten my ladder out yet, which I'm gonna do because I want those mulberries near the top. And also I'm fighting with birds for them. But luckily the birds and critters that really love mulberries are eating cicadas this year. And so I don't really have to compete as much for mulberries as I expected to, to be honest. So what I'm doing is I want to be able to make mulberry pie. I want to be able to make um, mulberry muffins and pancakes and mulberry syrup and things like that. And I'm gonna make mulberry pancakes with mulberry syrup for breakfast tomorrow for my husband and I. And so every day, the trick is I just go outside and I harvest a good portion, whatever I have time to harvest during my, at the end of my lunch break. Um, and I'll show you the process I use and then I freeze them and then I get out the portions I want when I need them later on. And this means that hopefully I'll be able to enjoy the mulberries throughout the year or at least until I use it all up. But I thought it'd just be fun to show you and share with you and help you think about, especially if you're a smaller garden gardener, help you think about you can have things fresh, right? But if you want to have them longer term, there are ways to preserve them, to save them in order to have them collectively as one set later on. And that includes by freezing them to help slow down the ripening process. So let's go outside and see how it goes. This is our mulberry tree. It's next to, and it serves sort of as an understory tree to our sweet gum tree which produces these nasty, nasty sweet gumballs that my husband lovingly calls monkey, monkey balls and I call ankle breakers. <laughs> and here's the tree. I purposefully let it grow this year so that the le branches would grow down because when we bought the house, the branches were cut back really far and I wanted the opportunity to collect the fruit. And the trick is, whoop, oh, trying to step up here. Hi Lilu, you good girl? And the trick is, you want to get the fruit. Now you see here, this is a sort of semi-red one. That fruit right there is too red. It's not quite ready. You want to find something that's darker. Here are some beautiful ones. As you can see, they're black, they're dark, they're ready to be harvested. And if I'm doing it right, when you harvest it, it should just come off in your hand like that. That is what you're looking for. You'll remove the stem later on, but it should be beautiful. And look at that juice it's already leaving on me. So as you can see, we have a tree full of the berries and I need to get to harvesting post haste.
Um, now that I have the berries harvested, I just rinse them off. I do look them over to see if there's any super red ones. Um, these are kind of, you can see they're a little bit brighter than the dark ones. See a little bit of a difference in the shade. I haven't quite figured out whether they need to be black, black, or can have a tiny bit of red to them. For example, this one has a little bit of red to it. You see the shade difference there? So, well, the first thing I do is, oops, should have made sure the water was cold first. <laughs> Rinse them out real well. Now normally, normally I have a lot more than this, but uh, I figure it's easier this way to just kind of show you what I do. I'm left-handed, but I'll let you see it this way. <laughs> um, and you can see the water's relatively clean after two rinses. Since we're gonna be cooking with these, I'm not as worried about having them like super, super safe because I figure the cooking process will take care of any. Here's some that I harvested yesterday in a more dedicated fashion. All right, so if you wanna eat them fresh, you can store them this way. Just put a lid on them, put them in the fridge. You know, label them. Or you can get out. Here's a set that I froze a couple of days ago. You only need to really freeze them for an hour or two. You could take the stems off before you freeze them or after, but I find that pulling the stems off is pretty easy <laughs> once they're frozen. It's a little bit more brittle. Oops, wrong. Putting the stems in the container. I try to be fast at it though, because I don't want them thawing. Oops. Good gosh. I'm I'm so used to doing it the opposite way that my hand is putting it in the wrong place. Let me set it up how I normally have it, which is over here like this, there we go. This is the way that it works for me. Oop, missed one. I personally eat them with the, with the stems, I don't mind, but I figure in a baking recipe, you know. You could wear gloves if you cared um, about staining your fingers. I don't really care. My hands get so nasty <laughs> uh, from gardening and from other things that, uh, you know, having some pink fingers is, or purple fingers is not the top of my list of concerns. And the reason you do it this way, uh, you do it on a sheet pan, is so that they can be pulled out individually and they aren't like one giant blob in the freezer bag. Now, if you were doing this in a su super professional way, you would dry off the berries thoroughly before you froze them. When I was doing this, I was in a rush. I was between meetings at work. I just finished my lunch and I just wanted to get it in the, uh, in the freezer. So I didn't dry them entirely. my bag of frozen berries. You can see they're individually, kind of see through the light there, individually in there. I'm just gonna plop these new ones in here. So I probably have about two and a half cups right now in this bag. I probably, with today's harvest, with this, with this batch, Plus, whatever I harvest tomorrow should be able to make something for this weekend. So I'm not going to label it because I'm going to eat it. You know, we're going to use it in a couple of weeks, within a week. <laughs> but normally, if you were storing them, obviously you'd want to label them. Let me run this to the freezer now. All right, so I'm just going to put the berries that we have rinsed off 
onto this paper towel and try to get some of the moisture off of them. I'm probably going to need at least two sheets to be able to lay them flat properly. Um, I'm not sure. them as much in a one layer not together they will unstick from each other in the you know when I take the stems off later so let's go ahead and uh, you know I'm gonna take some more out so you can put it in two pans there we go Looks a little bit better all right, so they're all in a pan, one layer, and now I'm gonna put them in the freezer. Now I have, we have a uh, freezer for storage um, that I'm able to lay this pan in relatively flat. I'll show you. So here we go, just putting it in the freezer. Try not to get freezer burn freeze on it and uh, just closing it up. Come back in two three hours and it'll be ready to process that's it for this video thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed it please hit the like button if you aren't already a subscriber please consider doing so and make sure you have the bell alarm set so you get post so you get alerts when i post new content and otherwise i'll see you next time